What's up you guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. So in today's video, I am finally getting around to trying out Florence by Mills, Millie Bobby Brown's makeup line. I got the majority of these products from Boots, but I also picked up two other things from Beauty Bay, which I think might be like, limited or exclusive to Beauty Bay. Okay, one thing I have to say before I actually start putting the makeup on my face, I was not prepared for how expensive this was. Like, don't get me wrong, it's not like Chanel prices or anything bougie like that, but considering this makeup is mostly aimed towards like teenagers, young adults, yeah, it's it's expensive. Like, this eyeshadow palette, 35 quid. I don't know about you, but when I was 16, like 40 years ago, I did not have 35 pounds to just spend on an eyeshadow palette. So yeah, maybe that'll give you a little idea about price point, but like, I'm pretty sure this brow gel was like 15 pounds or something crazy. Again, I was not prepared to drop 15 pounds on a brow gel. I mean, I did it anyway, but I wasn't prepared for it. I have, I think, most products from the makeup line, or at least I had everything that I could see in my local boots. So yeah, if you guys wanna hear my thoughts on Florence by Mills makeup, if you wanna see me chucking it all over my face, both in this camera and also this bad boy, oh yes, the macro's back, then yeah, please stay tuned. All right, so first of all, I'm gonna go in with this guy here. This is the Like A Light Skin Tint in the shade LM070. Obviously, given everything that's going on at the moment, there weren't any testers out, so I did have to color match just by eye. So hopefully this will work. Let's have a little look. I just wanna kind of see how much it blends out. Okay, to be fair, that actually has more coverage than I thought it would. I thought it was gonna be like a full-on, just tinted moisturizer. But yeah, it does definitely give you a little bit of coverage. I don't know if you can see that there. Interesting. So I'm gonna take a pump of that just on my sponge. Is that just me or does this smell like chocolate or something? So I'm just gonna blend all of that out. Okay, I'm not sure if this is necessarily good with a sponge. Like it's taking quite a lot of work just to kind of blend it in. Color is a tiny little bit darker than I would like, but hopefully I'll be able to lighten it up with concealer. I'm curious what this will be like on a brush. Honestly, ignore the cat hairs on my face. I've been trying to get them off for the past few minutes. Can't do it, so you just gonna have to deal with it. We all are. So yeah, I'm just gonna buff that into my skin and see what that looks like. This definitely smells kind of chocolatey. I rate it. Okay, I like that more. That to me looks a lot better than that. So yeah, I'm gonna stick with the brush for the application. I mean, it does definitely give you coverage. Like it's covering up the little spots and scars that I have. Yeah, I wasn't overly keen using a sponge with that, but that looks, that looks really nice. I've really been enjoying like tinted moisturizers. It almost like pains me to say it, but like lighter coverage foundations. It's like I'm turning my back on everything that I know, but yeah, I've been really digging a lighter base at the moment. And this is actually like, I would wear this every day. If this lasts nicely throughout the day, judging by how this looks on my skin right now, I will use this as like a day-to-day -day base because it's really good. It does just look so skin-like. I mean, there's no real telltale signs apart from it being slightly darker than the rest of my body. But apart from that, there's like no real telltale signs that this isn't just my face. So yeah, give me an hour or so in the sun and I think I'll be wearing that a lot more often. Next up, I have the See You Never Concealer and this one here is in the shade L055. So you can see that's how the two colors kind of compare. It almost looks like my product's kind of settled, or is that just the packaging? I'm not sure. Can you guys see this? It just looks like the product's kind of settled a little bit here. Or is that the packaging? I don't know. I don't really care. But I'm spending a lot of money on these products. Ooh, okay, wait. I really rate this. I thought it was gonna be a squeezy tube with like a little brush on applicator. No, this I like. It's like a metal, oh my God, that feels so good. Like a metal cooling thingy. Okay, so I'm gonna give that a squidge and pop that under my eyes. It is so liquidy. Is that what she said? If you're a younger member of the fam and you found yourself just looking for a nice innocent review of Florence by Mills makeup, just don't even worry about that last joke. Don't even worry about it. So see, I've got on my eyes, but I'm also gonna try and lighten my face a little bit. <laughs> I love natural makeup so much. Let me just put all this concealer on my face. So I think I am gonna use my sponge for this. I'm just gonna start to blend that out under my eyes. Mm. I like the finish. 
I would have liked to have done a little bit more. Like, I don't really feel like it's done too much. I feel like it's maybe just kind of evened out my skin a touch under my eyes, but it's not really giving me that much coverage. It does blend out like a dream though. Like again, that could well just be my skin. So I'm just gonna carry on blending that out. I might add a tiny bit more in a second, but like I had that little spot there and it did cover that up enough and it hasn't made it look crusty or any more obvious or anything. Like that little guy there, if I take a tiny bit more, I'm just gonna put it straight onto my sponge. Just like that. So it like kind of glides over it nicely. Yeah, without making it look too obvious. So I'm not gonna take a tiny bit more just to go underneath my eyes. Tiny bit more. Who am I even trying to kid? Okay, that was actually way more than I intended. I'm literally so heavy handed. My skin looks so good right now. My skin's actually been quite nice to me recently, but this has just leveled it up even more. This base actually kind of bangs. Not gonna lie, it looks pretty sick. Like, yeah, okay, you can see a couple little spots still here, but it just looks like my skin with a nice little filter on it. Like, like a nice little retro cam filter or something from Instagram. Honestly, I was not expecting to like either of these. I didn't have the highest hopes for this makeup because I'm not in the demographic, both in terms of age and the whole natural look. Like, that's not me. Don't know if you've noticed that. But yeah, I'm really kind of into it. All right guys, so next, I kind of just want to get this product out of the way with because I'm still not like 100% when it comes to cream blushes. Like, don't get me wrong, I've tried a few in the past and I'm slowly getting there, but I'm still just like, give me a powder blush. In fact, I'm don't even give me a powder, just give me highlighter. You know, highlight and bronzer, that's all I need on my face. So yeah, this guy here is called the Cheek Me Later Cream Blush and I got it in Zen Z. So it looks like this. Okay, it's got the little sweaty bobbles on it. I'll just show you guys again. Again, like, this isn't something that overly bothers me that much, but I do know that it does bother some people. So like, I just wanna show you guys. It's just a little bit sweaty as all. He's trying his best. Okay, so let's try a little swatch of this. I don't know if it's down to the sweat or if this is just what the product's like, but it is very, very kind of like, not even creamy. It's almost got like a liquid texture to it. Like, if you guys can see, but it does blend out into something a lot more sheer. Yeah, I think I'm gonna use my finger with that and just tap it on like that. And then I'll just go back over with my sponge. That's not bad. It's not something I'm gonna rush out to use as such, because again, like cream blushes, I still rather choose a powder blush over cream. I get that it's a decent product though. Like it's definitely not a bad product at all. It's just not my usual kind of thing. But I'm just gonna try this with this sponge here. I think I might actually prefer it with a sponge. I mean, yeah, it's pretty. I wouldn't go and buy another one. I think especially for the price, like I understand it's clean beauty and everything, but let's face it, not every teenager, young adult, not every person in general has like whatever it is, like 10, 15 pounds to spend on a cream blush. You can definitely get other blushes like this that are cheaper and better. So yeah, not a bad product. I just wouldn't say it's necessarily worth the money. Okay, so now I wanna move on to some highlighter. So this is apparently a body highlighter, but I'm not gonna to listen to that because I don't have any other highlighters to use. I'm gonna put this on my face. If it's good enough for my body, it's good enough for my face. That's not a good rule to live by. It's not. So this here is the All It Shimmers Body Highlight Dust and I got it in the shade Bronze Crush. So when I looked on the website, this one looked a lot more champagne-y compared to the other one, which did look a lot more pinky. Yeah, okay, so it looks quite champagne-y. Um, okay, I'm confused. Body Highlight Dust, but it has a pump. Oh my God. I was expecting to have to pump it a few times thinking maybe it'll come out as like a spray or something, but watch. Weird. Let's have a look. Okay, as we've blended out, it's very natural. But I mean, I guess it is like a body thing. So do a puff there. I don't know, I guess just like blend it out with a fan brush. Does that even do anything? Okay, another one. Let's try that. Fingers. Okay, that's a bit better. Again, just gives you like a very kind of like natural glowy look. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit Oh, pump doesn't want to work now. Oh my God, there we go. I'll take some of that on my hand. And I'm just going to use this teeny tiny little eyeshadow brush just so it's not too intense. Pick some of that up. Okay, let's try it. This might be too dark, but sometimes you just got to try these things. Oh, 
something is happening here. It is definitely a little tiny bit too dark for me, so again, give me an hour in the sun, I'll be all right. So like, yeah, it's giving me, okay, it's giving me a pretty intense cast there, isn't it? Like you can see, it's pretty. I'm not gonna carry on and put it all over my face because I will just end up looking muddy. I'm just gonna blend all of that out there. It's so messy though, I have got to say that. Like I'm literally getting covered in this stuff here. I think I'll just stick to putting it on my body. It's not really doing that much. I'm trying here. There's just a piece of that on my boobs there. You know what? I think I fully changed my mind on this. At first I was like, oh, it's not bad. You know, a little bit too dark for me, but I'm not sure. I mean, that's quite expensive. It's very, very messy as well, especially when it says, yeah, it just says rub all over body and get glowing. But this, this stuff gets like everywhere. I, mean, I don't remember how much I paid for this. I paid 20 quid for this. I'm quite easy to please when it comes to highlights as well. I wouldn't spend 20 pounds on this. You can get Ofra Rodeo Drive for 20 quid. Get that. Oh, I really spent 20 quid on that. I'm really not a fan. Maybe I'll put it on Depop or something. A lot of you guys have been asking if I'm gonna start a Depop and I have been thinking about it for a while. I might. I know I don't really feel comfortable selling like used makeup, but I guess obviously this is just like a spray that I've sprayed a couple times. So I don't know, someone take it away from me. Okay, so now I'm just gonna powder everything down literally the tiniest bit, just so I don't look like a sweaty mess on camera. Ooh. I'm really enjoying this base. I know it's not my usual kind of thing, but this really does look just like skin. I mean, I'm literally applying the tiniest amount of powder and it just looks really good. Like granted, I probably wouldn't wear this kind of makeup when I am filming just because usually with like the lights and stuff, you do have to wear a little bit more. But for every day, like I think it picks up a little bit more in the macro. My skin does look really good with this stuff. And actually now that I've powdered it down as well, the blush looks a lot more toned down as well. Not bad. Except for the highlighter, the highlighter's bad. So now we move on to brow gel. This here is the tint and frame brow gel. I got it in the shade dark brown. So it's a super teeny tiny little wand. I've already gone ahead and used my Benefit 24 hour brow setter gel, just kind of like spike my brows up a little bit. So I'm just gonna use this to just tint them a little. Okay, this color is spot on. Fully aware I have got it all over my face. But no, this color is bang on for me. I always find browns to be quite warm toned. Like even the dark ones, they've always got a little bit of redness to them. Whereas like my natural brows here, I haven't had them tinted or anything in, there's no tint left on my brows basically. And yeah, I just find it hard to find a color that kind of matches them. But this is actually bang on. It's a good brow gel. Like, okay, it is very, very expensive for what it is. But it is a nice product. Like it's not doing anything amazing. It is just kind of just tinting my brows. But I think because it is a good color match for me and because I do already have obviously the Benefit Brow Gel in my brows to kind of spike everything up, it's just making them look a little bit more textured. Just gonna clean myself up a little bit here. Yeah, I am really enjoying this brow gel. It's literally picking up all of my hairs and just tinting them, no worries. Like obviously I haven't been able to have my microblading top up so my arches have gone a little bit but that actually does fill them in quite a lot. So now I'm just gonna cheat a little bit and use my Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil, which you guys know is a fave of mine. Cheeky little plug there, but you guys know I do freaking love this pencil. So I'm just gonna fill my arch in like that. Oh, okay, I maybe want a little bit of hand with that, but I am digging these strong ass brows. So now let's move on to lip gloss. I just wanna give this a go for a minute. So I got it in the shade Magnetic Mills. It's the Get Gloss Lip Gloss, um, yeah. So yeah, before I do my eyes, I just wanna try out the lip product. Okay, it has no real smell. Let's try this out. Oh my God, that is so nude. Uh, I actually don't mind that, but oh my God, do I need some kind of lip product underneath that? Because otherwise it's literally just gonna look like I've dunked my lips in like strawberry milkshake or something. Like, wait, this isn't, this isn't the right hand symbol. Give me a sec. I'm just gonna put on a little bit of lip liner, maybe a little bit of lipstick, and then I'll add this guy to the center. I think that'll probably work out better. Okay, so I just lined my lips a tiny bit using, it wasn't even this lip liner, using the W7 Lip Twister in the shade Nude Dude. So yeah, I'm gonna pop a tiny little bit of this right in the center and just tap that in. It's quite nice. It's not like, 
It's not groundbreaking or anything. Like, it's not overly opaque and it's not, like, sparkly. Like, to me, if that didn't have the branding on it and someone said, like, how much do you think that would cost? I'd probably say it was, like, I don't know, like a three pound gloss or something from Revolution. I mean, it's just knowing that this stuff isn't cheap that when I try it, I'm just a little bit underwhelmed. So now let's try out the most expensive item in the collection, which is of course this eyeshadow palette. It is called the 16 Wishes Eyeshadow Palette. Okay, so I knew this eyeshadow palette was magnetic, but they do not prepare you for when you take it out of the box. It just like, it just completely fell apart. So yeah, this eyeshadow palette is magnetic. And basically, you just clip it together, but the magnets don't seem very sturdy. So like if you're traveling with this, it's just gonna fall apart. Like watch this. It just, it doesn't hold it. So like you go to hold the palette and it's just that. So yeah, the palette splits up into three different sections. So on the right side here, you have quick mass, eight different eyeshadows. You've got mostly mattes, two shimmers in the middle, and then what looks like a kind of shimmer up there. And then on this section here, you've got some pops of color. So you've got some kind of like bluey, minty green kind of shades, and then you've got pinks here. The thing that confuses me is, okay, I kind of understand the whole like magnetic palette, but I mean, does this stick together like this? Does it stick together? I mean, it's just the design that just fully confuses me. Cause okay, you want your neutrals palette, fine. Then you want to take your little baby blues with you, fine. Connect them together, that's fine, fine. Oh, it's not fine because it just fell on the floor. But like, why would you want to connect these two together? Because you don't really have any real transition shades in that mini. So you'd need to take that with you, but then they don't actually connect properly to each other. And then, okay, maybe you want to take the neutral side with you. You can connect this one to it, the baby blue. But if you just want to take the pinks, then you can kind of connect it to that palette, but then it doesn't really open and it falls off again. So I'm, ju I'm just really confused with the design, to be honest. Like the colors look pretty. Nice little neutrals like that on its own. That's a nice little palette, nice everyday kind of shades. It's just these two extra bits that confuse me. Like make up your mind, make a neutrals palette, make a pop of color palette, maybe have them stuck together. But if you are gonna have them stuck together, use a stronger magnet. Whew, okay, enough of me bitching. I feel, I feel like I'm being so sassy in this video. Okay, anyway, let's get this stuff on my eyeballs. So I think, I mean, let's have a few swatches. This shade called Peace. Okay, that actually looked a lot more pigmented than I thought it was gonna be. Fair enough, we have Hope. Ooh, that's pretty. Okay, these look good. I love the look of this shade here as well. It's called Curiosity. It's like a really cool tone, gold almost. Very nice. Okay, these actually look good. The packaging is letting you down here because these shadows swatch really nicely. So first of all, I'm just gonna go in with the shade Success. It's just a neutral kind of beige shade. And I'm just gonna run that in my crease just as my transition. That's quite nice. I mean, it's not a shade that really looks like much at all, but I do feel like it's kind of just gotten rid of any discoloration on my lids. Oh my God, okay, while I'm here, I just wanna quickly do this. I'm gonna take the shade Celebration because it looks like a shimmer and I'm gonna put it on my face. Ooh, okay, yeah, putting that on my face. That's literally like, oh my God. That's so intense. Like that's literally so almost like white and icy. It looks a lot more champagne-y in the pan, but on the skin, it's literally like white. I might take the tiniest bit and just put it on my nose. Woo! I don't know what that noise was. How did I miss that guy down there? Let's take some of this. It just looks kind of chunky. I mean, it's okay. I'll take a little bit of that and just try that on my inner corner. It's just a bit chunky. God, this is like an emotional roller coaster right now. Every single shadow, I'm like, yes, ah, yes. What? Let me try the other shade on my inner corner instead. See, that is so <laughs> intense. It's almost too intense, to be honest. I'm just gonna blend that out a bit instead. Wow. That is literally so intense, oh my God. Yeah, not a fan of that like glittery one because it has even started to fall down around under my eye already. So like it's looking a little bit wild there. I like the other shade though. 
the celebration one. Very, very, very fair. If you are any darker than me, this will not work for you at all. That celebration shade though is so icy. Like it's almost a little bit too fair for me. Ooh. So next, I think what I might do is do a little kind of like neutral moment on the lid and then maybe do one of the pops of color on my lower lash line. So now with the same fluffy brush, I'm gonna go in with the shade Bravery and just run that slightly lower in my crease. It's quite nice. Then using the same brush, I'm gonna take this nice poopy color down here. I love a poopy brown. And I'm gonna start by applying that on the outer corner. But I am also kind of thinking I might just blend it all over my lid. These eyeshadows are actually really easy to work with so far. I know I'm only using neutral, so it's kind of hard to tell. But yeah, they all just seem to blend together really easily without any kind of fallout or anything. Like if I just wing that out, you can just see. I don't really have to do too much of the blending. It just kind of like blends itself. Sharpen that up a touch. Okay, so now for my lower lash line, I think I'm gonna go in with this shade Optimism. It's like a lilac-y purple. I might go in with this blue as well. I'm not sure yet, but I'm gonna play it safe with the purple first. So I'm gonna tap off the excess there and then just run that on my outer corner at first. And just slowly bring that in. See, this one actually has quite a lot of fallout. Okay, this is a lot more sheer than I thought. I am having to build it up quite a bit, which is resulting in there being a lot more fallout. Mm, it's okay. Maybe I'll try this shade here instead, that blue, or at least kind of like overlap the two. Okay, I don't know if that necessarily looks good, but I really enjoy that color combo. Yeah, I kind of love those two colors together. I'm not sure if I love them on my lower lash line, but I'm rolling with it. I wonder if I maybe take a little bit of freedom as well. And I'll just pop that on the outer corner instead. Don't know. Just gonna clean that up a tiny bit. I don't hate it, you know. Like this wasn't what I had planned at all. And it definitely needs some cleanup with some of that concealer underneath my eyes. But yeah, I actually don't mind the little color combo going on there. Um, the eyeshadow palette is okay. It's one of the better things I've tried apart from the base products. It's just the packaging fully lets it down. Like, I feel like this palette isn't even really that usable because well, like it's usable, but not in terms of travel. I mean, you can't even pick the bloody thing up. And yeah, just be warned that the pops of color aren't that overly poppy. They're kind of more like pastel colors and they do have a fair bit of fallout. So like if it came down to it and if they released another palette, same price, maybe just different colors, would I get it? Based on this palette, I wouldn't. You can make the colors work. I think the neutral palette's actually quite nice. It's just, yeah, for the price, not feeling it for the price. All right guys, while I've got you here, because I am aware that this video could be getting very, very long at this point, I'm just gonna apply some of my mascara. So this is the Built to Lash Mascara, and I'm pretty sure I just got it in black. Don't worry if you're looking at me right now thinking, what does this girl look like? I'll do all my cleanup and everything in a bit. I just wanna try this out. Okay, so the one looks very basic, but don't judge a mascara by its wand. I think it was Napoleon that said that. I'm pretty sure it was Napoleon that said that in 1874, might have been 1875. Okay, this is giving me length for sure. Okay, so as expected, this is definitely more of a natural kind of mascara, but it is giving me hella length and it's picking up all the individual lashes. It just fully combs through all the lashes but without putting too much product on there. So yeah, perfect if you are like going to school or something and you do just want a little bit of mascara, but maybe your school doesn't allow too much. It definitely is more of like an everyday kind of natural looking mascara, but it is a good in. Like, don't get me wrong, I do prefer more of a chunky lash, but I can still appreciate that this is doing a good job of just like separating everything. But again, like, I can't remember how much this was exactly, but I know it's gonna be somewhere probably between like 10 to 15 pounds. You can get mascaras from Primark, MUA, like so many different places that do kind of do the same thing. So once again, another decent product. It's just way too expensive in my opinion. I feel so mean. Okay, uh, I look mental right now. I'm gonna go off camera, do the other eye, mascara, eyeshadow. I'm gonna add a little bit more concealer under my eyes and do whatever I need to do to kind of complete the look. And then I will see you guys in a second. All right guys, so this is a finished look. I don't, I don't hate it. Like there's some aspects of the makeup that I really, really like. 
I love this color under my eyes right now. I love the base. I like the concealer and the foundation. It's just not something I would necessarily pair together. Like if I'm gonna do a glossy lip, I'm gonna do a glossy lip and like my usual. If I'm gonna do a pasta lie, I'm gonna do my usual, but with a pasta lie. So the fact that I've got very natural skin, quite natural lips because the lip gloss is actually already worn off. And then not so much of an everyday kind of eye makeup look, but with everyday mascara. I don't know, what do you guys think? I am gonna wear this for a few hours. I don't have anything fun planned today. Like, does anyone during lockdown? I am gonna go and get a burger in a minute though. So yeah, I'm gonna keep all of this on my face for the next few hours. We'll see how it looks. And I will see you guys in a second for the check-in. All right, guys, it is a fair few hours later. And by a fair few hours, I mean it is currently there we go, one in the morning. I don't know what's wrong with me. This makeup has actually worn really well. I don't know if it's down to the fact that it's obviously very kind of lightweight. Like there's not actually that much makeup on my skin. I feel like it actually still looks pretty good. Like it has worn down in certain areas, but because obviously it wasn't overly full coverage and it was quite natural looking anyway, any changes aren't that noticeable. I mean, the only thing that's properly worn off is the lip product, like the lip gloss, but obviously that wore off like pretty quickly anyway. Yeah, I mean, all things considered, my base really doesn't look that different. The eyeshadow's dulled down a little bit, like the purple on the bottom doesn't look as lovely now. Brows are still on. Yeah, I wasn't expecting it to look like this after all this time. Like, I'm not gonna lie to you, I actually kind of forgot that I was filming. And then I was about to go to bed and I was about to take off my makeup and then I had to run downstairs and uh, yeah, here I am. So you almost didn't get a check-in. For nine-ish hours or so, I really don't think it looks too bad. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, as always, please do give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you do wanna see more of me because I upload all the damn time. Let me know what you think of this makeup. Let me know if you've tried it. Let me know if you're gonna be trying it. Let me know how you take your cups of tea. I'm a two and a half sugars kind of girl myself. Three, if I can get away with it. But apart from that, that is it from me. I love you guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye.